This is part 12 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss adding database support for ASP.NET Core REST API service. For this, we are going to use Entity Framework Core. What is Entity Framework Core? EF Core is an ORM, that is an object relational mapper. It's a complete rewrite from the ground up. If you have any experience with previous versions of Entity Framework, you'll find a lot of familiar features in EF Core. EF Core is lightweight, extensible, and open source software. Like .NET Core, EF Core is also cross-platform. It works on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. EF Core is Microsoft's official data access platform. Now, to add database support, the first thing that we need is the database connection string. Notice the server is Microsoft SQL Server Local DB. The database name is Employee DB, and we are going to use Windows authentication to connect to this database. So we have set trusted connection equals true. I've already included this database connection string in app settings.json file. The important point to keep in mind is make sure you include it in app settings.json file of the API project because it is this API project that communicates with the database. We are going to use Entity Framework Core to connect to and work with Microsoft SQL Server. So this means we need to install these two NuGet packages for our API project. We can install them either by using NuGet Package Manager or Package Manager Console. First, let's install one of the packages using NuGet Package Manager. So right-click on the dependencies folder within our API project and then select this option, Manage NuGet Packages. Click on the Browse tab and search for Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server Package. Next, let's install the second package, Entity Framework Core Tools. This package is required to create and execute EF Core migrations. If you're new to EF Core migrations, we discuss them in detail in part 50 of our ASP.NET Core tutorial for beginners course. Now let's install this EF Core Tools package using Package Manager Console. To get to Package Manager Console, click on this tab right here. If you don't find it here, click on View, Other Windows, and then Package Manager Console. From the Package Manager Console, execute this command, Install Entity Framework Core Tools. Next, in the API project, we need to create a class that derives from the built-in EF Core DB context class. This is one of the very important classes in EF Core. It is this class that we use in our application code to interact with the underlying database to retrieve and save data. To use the DB context class in our application, we create a class that derives from the DB context class. Notice we named our class app db context and it derives from the built-in ef core db context class for the db context class to be able to do any useful work it needs an instance of the db context options class the db context options instance carries configuration information such as the connection string and the database provided to use as you can see we are not doing anything special with this db context options instance. We are simply passing it on to the base class constructor, that is, to this db context class constructor by using the base keyword here. At the moment, within our application, we've got two entities, department and employee. We store department information in department's underlying database table and similarly employee information in the employee's database table. We don't need a specific table for gender because it is an enum. So for these two entities, department and employee, we create two db set properties, db set of employee and db set of department. We'll use these db set properties to query and save instances of employee and department classes. The link queries against the db set properties will be translated into SQL queries against the underlying database. We'll see this in action in our upcoming videos. Finally, we also want to include some C data both for employees and departments. We do that by overriding this onModelCreating method. 
to the API project, let's add a new folder. Name it models. We want to place the DB context class in this folder. So let's add a new class file. Name it AppDB context. In the interest of time, I've already copied the code that we have just seen on the slide to the clipboard. So let me paste it right here. We are missing some of the using declarations. Let's bring them in by pressing Control period. DB context class is in Microsoft dot entity framework code namespace. Employee and department classes are present in employee management dot models namespace. Next, we also want to provide some seed data both for employees and departments and we do that by overriding on model creating method. Notice the moment I type override and then press the space bar, we see on model creating method. In the interest of time, let me paste the required code right here. Notice we are using this incoming parameter model builder and then first we are providing C data for departments. When this code executes, we should have four rows in the departments table and then we are providing C data for employees entity and again when this code is executed, we should have four employees in the underlying employees database table. At this point, we already have the database connection string in app settings.json file. We also have the application db context class. Our next step is to configure SQL Server. We do that in startup.cs. This startup class has two important methods configure services and configure. It is this configure services method that we use to add SQL Server support. Notice on this incoming parameter of type i service collection, we have add db context method and using this method we specify our application specific db context class. If you remember the name of our application db context class is app db context. Bring in the required namespace and to this method we pass a lambda. Let's call the parameter options. On this options object, which is of type as you can see from the IntelliSense DB context options builder, we have use SQL server method. This method is in entity framework core namespace. So let's bring that in. And to this method, we need to pass the database connection string, which at the moment is present in app settings.json file. Notice the key that we have used to store the database connection string is db connection. And to read this connection string from this app settings file, we're going to use this configuration property. On the configuration property, we have get connection string method and to this method, we just need to pass the key that we have used to store the database connection string, which in our case is db connection. Obviously, we have to include this key within double quotes. After SQL Server is configured, our next and final step is to add database migration. For that, we use this command add migration. In Visual Studio, launch Package Manager console and use the command add migration and then specify a name for the migration. I'm going to call it initial create. Migration successfully added. If we take a look at the solution explorer, notice we have a folder with name migrations and within this we have a file with name initial create which contains our migration code. Our next step is to execute this migration and for that we use update database command. So again in the package manager console, let's use update dash database command. Update completed. If we take a look at SQL Server Object Explorer, Expand SQL Server, Local DB, MS SQL Local DB, Databases, Employee DB, and notice we have both the tables, Departments and Employees. 
we have four rows in the department's table and if we take a look at the employees table we have four rows here as well this completes the database setup in our next video we'll add the required repository classes that's it in this video thank you for listening